chances are you have either a furry, feathered, or scaled friend at home. The bonds and memories we create with our pets stay with us for a lifetime. But how is it we welcome these four-legged creatures into our homes and families and have never spoken a word to each other? This is my one-year-old puppy, Lola. Every day, I will tell her things such as time to eat, let's go outside, night-night time, and I love you. Sometimes, when I speak to her, I will get playful tail wagging, licks, or barks in response. Never anything I can fully understand. This is a main issue many pet owners have, understanding what their animal is saying. Animals do attempt to communicate with us, but in their own language. What is it that makes a language? And where did language come from? Dictionary.com defines language as a body of words and systems for their use common to a people who are of the same community or nation, the same geographical area, or the same cultural tradition. Languages can also be non-vocal and range from hand gestures to facial expressions. We can even use different languages with different groups of people. For humans, language started with our human ancestors. They began with grunting and howling with others within their hunter-gatherer groups. They were not capable of speaking as we know it today. Only about 100,000 years ago is when our human ancestors started to develop vocal tracks and evolve abilities to vocalize like we do. A strong theory for how human language came along is the philosophy that the levels of language evolved in stages. In the earlier stages, one noise can mean a bunch of different things. A loose modern example of this would be relating it to a whistle. In the United States, a whistle can mean anything from finding someone attractive being amazed, or as an attention grabber. The next step of creating human language was the birth of consonants and vowels, giving specific noises distinct meanings. But what about the animal kingdom? As for them, their forms of language and communication have relatively stayed the same. How do animals communicate? Animals speak to each other through signals, such as pheromones, auditory cues, visual cues, and touch cues. These forms of communication can occur between members of the same group or a different species entirely. Pheromones are chemical communications that are used in order to get a response from another animal of the same or differentiating species. They can attract mates, mark territories, show social status, find prey, identify family members or other animals, mark food trails, and even initiate more complex behaviors. A prime example of this is the white-tailed deer's pheromone glands. During mating season for deer, bucks can find a willing mate and even determine the age of the mate through does pheromones in urine, feces, and skin gland rubbings. But it's not just a deer who use pheromones. Many animals, such as dogs, mountain lions, cats, snakes, ants, and so much more use this technique to communicate. Auditory communication in animals are all the sounds they make with one another or different species. This form of communication is very popular in the animal kingdom, with thousands of species using it. These noises can be used to attract mates, send warning, defend territory, show dominance, express affections, talk to relatives, and so much more. Wolves have very loud auditory communication with their howls, which can be heard from very far away. Some other prime examples of animals which use auditory communication are Birds, dolphins, monkeys, frogs, squirrels, and many more.
visual communication are the gestures, facial expressions, body posture, coloration, and adaptation used to converse with an animal of the same species or a different species entirely. The first animal that popped into my head when researching this were peacocks. Peacocks are cherished around the world for their gorgeous display of tail feathers. But did you know that they are actually trying to communicate when doing so? It's kind of like speed dating for them. They are trying to show that they are the best and all the reasons why female peacocks should date them. In poison dart frogs, their bright skin colorations and patterns tell predators to avoid eating them. Other examples of animals which use visual communication are chimpanzees, crocodiles, elephant seals, deer, monkeys, and a bunch more. Touch communication is a form of communication of one animal touching another in some way. This communication form, I might argue, is one of the most important. It has crucialness it plays in the animal's psychology, need to survive, and form social relationships. All creatures are social in their own ways. Honeybees will uniquely perform a sort of dance within their hives to tell other bees where to find food. The fellow honeybees will actually touch the bee performing the motions to understand what they are communicating. Many primates will groom one another as a form of bonding teaching the young to cooperate and keeping peace within the colony. A favorite animal of mine actually uses commu touch communication on a daily basis. Sea otters are highly playful creatures which create special bonds with their pups and specific otter friends. They'll nuzzle one another, touch noses, and play games. Tactile communication all ties back to when mammals give birth to their young. Puppies and kittens alike know instinctively to need for their mother's mammary gland for milk. Other animals which use touch communication are tigers, rhinos, bears, elephants, porcupines, and many more. Professor Khan Slobachikov of North Arizona University has been intently studying the communication of prairie dogs for over 30 years. This may seem like an unlikely source if you are not familiar with the type of animal prairie dogs are. They are very social and vocal rodents which live in colonies all across North America. They are very vocal with one another and towards dangers. When Professor Slobachikov first began studying, he noticed that with the different calls of danger from prairie dogs, there would be different actions taking place, such as dropping into their burrows or standing up to get a better view. Slobachikov and his students would record the cries of the prairie dogs to different predators throughout the day and analyze them. To his surprise, the calls all had different frequencies and overtones compared to the different dangers. Conducting further research, Slobachikov had four human volunteers all differ differentiating in appearance and height walk through the prairie dog colony in a blue, yellow, green, and gray shirt. Listening to the recordings, he found the prairie dog's calls could be broken up into different categories based on the shirt the volunteer was wearing. And taking an even deeper look into the data collected, Slobachikov found that the calls could be even broken down based on the height of the volunteer. He was curious if prairie dogs would be able to do the same sort of communication with abstract shapes. Him and students created a wire system with cardboard cutouts of circles, squares, and triangles and pulled them three feet over the burrows. The recordings taken showed that the prairie dogs had the ability to communicate the difference between the triangle and circle. Although the research was unable to determine the depth of language between the social communications of prairie dogs, he was able to prove that the communication of dangers were more sophisticated than we have ever assumed. Depending on who you talk to, odds are the person will feel one of two ways on the question, do animals have language? Based on the evidence and what we do actually know about animal communication, 
I find it unfair to try to conclude it isn't a language based on human language principles. As of right now, psychologists and scientists have not been able to prove whether grammar or the ability to recall things from the past or that are not present in time exist in the animal kingdom. Do I believe a bird is going to write a novel or dogs are going to start playing poker anytime soon? No. A conclusion I have been able to make from researching this topic is there are still a lot of unknowns. But I believe we don't give animals enough credit when it comes to their language. From howling to chirping, animals definitely do have a lot to say. Hopefully, through more further research and studies, we will be able to answer the age-old question, what is my pet saying?